Hi, I am Prerna from Telecom and Technologies and uh, today I'll give you just an overview of the optimization of the 3G cellular network. So, as uh, we know that we plan a network before uh, deploying it physically, that uh, before making a live network, we go through the planning process of a network. So, when a lit network becomes live, that means when it begins to deliver the services to the users, its performance needs to be checked. So that's how we come to the optimization. So optimization is defined as the process of making an existing system more effective. That means the system should provide the services to the user more effectively. So optimization is different from fault management. We can define optimization as the process of uh, tuning an existing network. That means to making the system work more effectively. That means all the radio resources are utilized more efficiently. So what are the goals of optimization now, if I'm talking about the optimization of 3g network so that means the optimization here will be like the system should work according to the requirements of the operator so because if those criteria are met only then the subscriber will be satisfied with the services of a particular network so when we talk about the goals of the optimization so that means the system should work according to the planning assumptions effective coverage plus capacity requirements should be met now we need to optimize the network because there could be some planning uh, deviations from the planning assumptions there could be change in the behavior of the subscriber or there could be change in the behavior of the environment for example if we have deployed a site in the particular year so after one year or two year the surrounding conditions may not be same there could be more obstructions building strain so that could uh, affect the performance of a system so if you're not optimizing of a network we're not uh, keeping a check on the performance of a network the system will uh, result into a degraded system because if a particular network is not uh, optimized the users in that area will suffer from blocked calls dropped calls and smaller RF coverage. So if a user is uh, facing such kind of problem, so definitely he will not uh, use the services of that particular network. He will try to migrate to some another network. So that will cause a loss of revenue to a particular network operators. So that's why it's important to optimize the network. So we can have a check on the performance of a network that how well it is performing and how efficiently it is delivering the services to its users. So now if we need to optimize a network, that means if we need to check the performance of a network, we need some input parameters on the basis of which we can check the performance of our network. So that means we should have some information sources. We should have some information sources from which we can check the performance of our system like key performance indicators after that we have regular drive tests and customer complaints now the customer 
complaints are the complaints which are made by us by the users uh, if our network is not working properly for example if you are uh, going through or you are uh, having a number of dropped calls in your service area so that could be used as an investigation tool to find out that what could be the problem in that particular service area that means there could be some rf coverage related issue or it could be a neighbor cell uh, issue which is leading to a number of dropped calls so customer complaints also uh, serves as an important input parameter to check the performance of a network because ultimately the customer satisfaction is the goal of the network operators or the service providers now after that we have this drive test so drive tests are basically done to check the coverage of a particular area that means to check the performance of a particular area that how that particular network is uh, working in that service domain so it can uh, check the various parameters like the successful calls the number of dropped calls the hand of calls the rf coverage so regularly these drive tests are performed in order to keep a check on the performance of the system last one we have the key performance indicators now these key performance indicators serves as the best information tool or information source for performing the optimization of a network so we will uh, have a overview of these key performance indicators that what are these and what are the various parameters on the basis of which the network optimizers try to tune the existing network now if we look at the optimization phase of a network we know that uh, we have a network design before optimization then we have to do the planning of the network and after that we have the implementation of the network so after that uh, basically we're checking that acceptance criteria are met or not so that means we are checking here the acceptance criteria so if the acceptance criteria is not met no so it will begin with again we can say that this is a pre optimization phase if the acceptance criteria is met the network becomes a live network so as soon as the network become live the process of optimization begins so that means it's a continuous process the optimization will takes place through the lifetime of the network so now we will discuss that what are the indicators or performance measures on the basis of which we can optimize our network or we can check the performance of a network and then we can have the respective solutions to those particular issues so we will discuss here about the key performance indicators or mostly these are referred as kpis so these uh, key performance indicators are basically the performance measures or matrices which are used to uh, check the performance of the network or a particular activity in which the network is engaged there are different number of activities like call setup uh, call handover so these are the different uh, activities on the basis of which the performance of a network is judged so these have a particular threshold values so that means if there is a degradation of a particular kpi from that threshold value it is clearly indicating that our network is suffering from some issues that means it has some coverage related issues or other uh, problem to which the network is not performing
well. So these uh, KPI basically serves as a performance metric. Like in you know, colleges, we have our KPIs like our marks. So that means we have a particular threshold value. If we are scoring below, uh, below that, that means there is some problem in the performance. So similarly, we have KPIs here judge or evaluate our network. So there are a number of KPIs for a previous network optimization. Like, like we have accessibility API. We have retainability mobility. So, like if here we have the accessibility KPI, it will deal with how successfully the user is accessing the network or how successfully the network is able to admit the number of users. If we talk about retainability, it will uh, imply that uh, for how much of the duration of the desired service is provided to the user. That means it is dealing with the number of call drops. There should not be an abnormal call drop when a conversation is going on. So this is basically dealing with the ability to retain the services. After that, we have the mobility KPIs. Now mobility deals with the performance when the user is moving from one station to another. That means uh, the services should be provided to the user uninterrupted. There should not be handover failures. That means when one station is trying to hand over the call to another stations, it should be a successful handover. It should not be a failure. As it will uh, lead to the disconnection of the call. So for example, uh, we will take our accessibility KPI. So as I mentioned earlier that this accessibility KPI basically tells about the access, how successfully we're accessing the network or it basically uh, tells the performance of the UT run or our RNC, how efficiently it can admit the number of users to a premise, so we can say the network. So accessibility KPI has some undergoing parameters within itself on the basis of which we can tell that whether the network is performing well or not. So for example, let's take RRC connection establishment. Now this RRC refers to radio resource control. This RRC is basically the UMTS protocol or a three protocol which is uh, mainly designed for the signaling and control related information which should be exchanged between the two entities like our user equipment and the RNC which is our radio network controller. So that means before starting the actual conversation or before uh, starting the transportation of our data or voice, first of all we have to establish a path between Two entities. If we have this user equipment, then we will have our serving node B and the respective radio network controller. So now this entity is here responsible for providing various resources to the user equipment or to the user in a network. So that means, for all, this is making a request whether the resources are available or not. So that means the request to which uh, the user equipment is forwarding is the RRC connection establishment request. So it will be like checking the resources and further there is also RRC 
why you need to set up between these two entities. So if the resources are available, that means the rate network controller is able to handle this user. It can provide the services. So it will send an RRC connection response. So if the response is acknowledged, a positive response, the RRC connection will be established successfully. So that means we are admitted to the network when this connection is successfully established between these entities. When we are trying to ask the network, first of all, this control is established and after that, we will get a transport channel for the transmission of our data. That means, first of all, it is being exchanged on some common control channel and after that, some dedicated channel will be allocated to the user for the transfer of his services. So, that means if we have to check the capacity of the RSU of a network, how successfully it can admit the number of users. So, we will calculate the RRC connection establishment rate, successful establishment rate. RRC successful establishment rate. Now, this will be the summation of all the RRC successful connections divided by the RRC connection attempts. Because there will be a number of attempts made by the number of users. So, if we have to get the successful percentage or successful rate of this entity, we have to calculate by dividing successful number of connections with the total number of attempts. So, if this particular uh, KPI or if this particular entity has a value, threshold value like 96%, that means if 96% is indicating that yes, network is performing well, but if this rate here is like only 50%. So that means the network is suffering from some RF problems. There could be the failure of the RF links, or it may be uh, possible that the cell to which the user is trying to access is congested, it's loaded. So these are the various parameters which are used to check the performance of a network. Now, if you're checking the RRC connection, that means the control and signaling connection between the two entities. We have another parameters like RAB connection, which is radio access bearer. So bearer is a term which corresponds to like a transporter, which will be calculated for data. So once your RRC is established successfully after that there will be the establishment of your radio axis bearer so we have the same entities user node b rnc and the code name so if rrc procedure is successful after that there will be an RAB assignment request from the core network. So from RNC UE, there will be a RRC bearer establishment. Now if this bearer is established successfully, so there will be an RAB assignment response and this connection will be established successfully. So we calculate the rate for this parameter log, like the total number of RAB successful connections divided by the total number of attempts made for that particular connection. 
So these are the various parameters which will be uh, telling us about the accessibility of the, of the how well it is uh, providing the services to the user who is trying to access the services. If you talk about retainability, that means for what kind of duration, what amount of duration the user can access the services. That means there should not be an abnormal release of the call. There should be low call drops in our system. So if we talk about our mobility, yes, we will talk about the handovers, that there should be successful handovers. If the handovers are not successful, that means there is a problem between the two particular uh, stations. So that's why the new station is not able to uh, entertain the uh, particular user. If you're trying to move from one station to another, if that new station is also overburden, so it will not process of a request and the call will ultimately drop. So these are various uh, performance indicators and, and with the respective thresholds on this which we can check that whether our network is performing well or not. So this is all for the overview of this uh, optimization of uh, 3G networks. Thank you.